Well, I learned a valuable lesson in, in one show. I had set up, I took about an hour and a half, almost two hours to set up this very fancy, very cinematic and impressive shot, shooting across the holster of the bad guy, uh, working for a backlit uh, tableau kind of thing with Jim Arnaz coming out of the Long Branch Saloon. And finally, camera was ready. We called for Jim, who was in his trailer playing Pinochle, as usual, because he loved Pinochle, and it was his way of relaxing. And he was a sweetheart of a man, by the way, and a lovely actor and a lovely human being. And so Jim came out, and I told him what had to happen. You know, I said, when you come through the doors, uh, the gunslinger goes for the gun. You shoot, and he gets wounded, and he go and he runs out because we're going to track him and uh, hopefully see the dripping of blood, etc. So it's, it's a whole very complicated thing. And Jim says, "Wait a minute, excuse me." He says, "Joe, I come out. He draws a gun. I shoot him. He." walks away from it? I said, well, he's wounded. Uh, he said, yeah, but Marshall Dillon doesn't wound. I said, uh, excuse me? He says, I can't, uh, no, the character wouldn't do that. I said, why not? I said, it's night. Because then I realized that he, he, he was justifying something that was very, very much an a, 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 an intricate and very sensitive part of his character, which is once he draws on a man, that man is dead. And he made that very clear to me. I said, but Jim, it's nighttime. You couldn't possibly see him clearly enough to, uh, it, 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 to, to hit him directly. Uh, he says, no, he says, can't do it, Joe. He says, I know you spent a lot of time setting this up and I know the camera is in where you want it. And he says, and I'm sorry to do that to you, but I can't do that. Jim is not the kind of, of human being or actor that would do anything on just for arbitrary ego reasons or because he's a diva about his role. Because that also happens where an actor or, or an actress will absolutely demand certain things be done because of my character using the character to justify probably something that makes her feel uncomfortable or makes her look too old or makes him look too weak or whatever the, whatever the, uh, the problem is. In this case, what I learned was that a man who plays a character for as long as Gunsmoke was on the air by that time, and I think it was probably in its fifth, sixth year, has is committed really to the integrity of his role. And because of that, he knows he can't suddenly depart from that commitment and that and that part of of the relationship he has with that role to satisfy a director's need to be fancy with a camera angle. Uh, and it could, I had to settle my anger a little bit to, to come around to realizing that. Because at first, you know, my, in, the immediate reaction is, oh, come on, this is, this is nonsense. He wouldn't miss, etc. But he was absolutely right. In terms of the Marshall Dillon mystique, if he draws on a man, that man is dead. And that's the way it, it, it the, the, the mythology had been constructed. And that's the way it had to stay. So I had to dismantle the shot. And he doesn't shoot the man. The man draws his gun. He pulls his gun. The man runs away. <laughs> so I averted a disastrous confrontation 
and at the same time learned a valuable lesson, which is not to set up any kind of shot, any kind of scene, any kind of staging without a rehearsal. Now, I've fallen into that trap several times since then, even in all these glorious years of directing, where you think it's so simple. Uh, the actor is late, I'll go ahead and set it up on second team. Or the actor needs a break or has to rest. It's okay, we'll set it up on your stand-in. Well, and every time I learn the same lesson, I finally have learned it thoroughly. I will never, ever set up any scene or, or, or shot, however fancy, especially if it's fancy, without a rehearsal. 